when when I think about the concept of founder mode versus manager mode, what what struck me is this is not a problem to be solved. This is a tension that needs to be managed. Hey, everybody! Welcome to another episode of the Business Lunch Podcast with your hosts Ryan Dice and myself, Roland Fraser. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing so great. Excited about the event coming up uh, in a week or so. Everything's getting prepped and ready. All the like booths and stuff is arriving. All the swag. It's fun. Good times. How I about you? I have a tremendous amount of uh, stuff to talk with you about on that. So maybe after the podcast and a couple of meetings today, if you've got some time, let's uh, let's chat about that because uh, I, I, I had a lot of really good things, I think, to help. So that I'm let's very do. excited about. Um, but you sent me a uh, some information on something that is kind of a uh, hot topic right now, and uh, I, I and you suggested it would be great to talk about. So why don't you introduce that and let's uh, let's chat about it? Yeah. So it was this um, this article by Paul Graham that was making the rounds a couple of uh, I don't know a week or so ago, basically while you were being lazy in Mexico, um, the entrepreneurial community w- was losing their collective minds. There were memes. <laughs> memes, I tell you. Um, and we weren't there to talk about it. And so I thought it would be good to talk about it right now. And so the, the article, uh, the post was called founder mode. And, um, just to kind of give you the gist. So Brian Chesky, uh, who I know, you know, is the founder CEO of Airbnb. He gave this talk at Y Combinator and he was just encouraging kind of the theme of his talk was encouraging the audience of founders to stay, make sure that they stay in founder mode and to resist the urge to go into manager mode. And he kind of gave all these examples of how, and you know, the, again, Brian Chesky's actual talk wasn't in the article. So it was more, it, it was more a summary of it. And so this is how Paul Graham summarized. He said, the theme of Brian's talk was that the converse, I'm sorry, the theme of Brian's talk was that the conventional wisdom about how to run a larger company is mistaken. As Airbnb grew, well-meaning people advised him that he had to run the company in a certain way for it to scale. Their advice could be optimistically summarized as hire good people and give them room to do their jobs. He followed this advice and the results were disastrous. So he had to figure out a better way on his own, which he did partly by studying how Steve Jobs ran Apple. Uh, so far, it seems to be working. Airbnb's free cash flow uh, margin is now among the best in Silicon Valley. So essentially, the gist was you know, maybe crew, we swung the pendulum too far. We let too many, we let the, uh, the, the adults run the asylum for too long and it's time for the inmates to step back in and run the asylum. So that was the gist of the article. And there were plenty of people kind of poking fun at like, well, what really is founder mode? Um, founder mode, frankly, has got us into some dark places before when you think about Uber and some of the scandals that it has. And so is this just an overreaction? So that's the setup. What do you say, Roland Fraser? Are you uh, pro founder mode or anti founder mode? Uh, I I am pro balance because I I think like in terms of being able to be um, you know innovative and and agile in a company, having the person who started it stick with it, I'm a big advocate for. When we have portfolio companies and the CEO or the founder CEO is talking about maybe bringing in a CEO, I'm generally against it. Um, I, I don't like professional CEOs as much as I like founders that have great people that are working uh, under them because I just generally think nobody cares as much about the company as the founder that created it. Now, you can easily get beyond the capabilities and competence of the founder as things change from a startup to a more advanced, you know, more mature company. <clears throat> and, um, and, and so... I think that you need to balance the two. So I'm not for either manager mode or founder mode. I'm for management mode, which is kind of a combination of the two. So I think it's a hybrid thing, right? Or or Fanager. or mounder mode. I think I think I like fanager better. But but, Mount, but mounder mode sounds like something we shouldn't Google. I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but in terms of uh, scalability, you know how how scalable is having the founder do everything, it's not very scalable. And how, um, how empowering is it for an employee to be micromanaged by a founder, you know, and this would easily be a, you know, a way for kind of over micromanage type founders to, to really destroy the, 
initiative of their employees. So I think there's, there's a balance. I do think it's great in terms of if the founder has been responsible for a good culture in the company, it's a great way to maintain that so that it doesn't get diluted through third parties. But if, if you're thinking about a company that has in our scalable model, transferable value, one of the things that can be crippling to that is an over-dependence on the founder and that the founder dependency uh, paradox is that we need the founder to make the company go and the, a good founder will continue <clears throat> to provide great strategic vision and, uh, and direction and innovation for a company to hit its full potential. But at the same time, they can hold the company back because the company is limited to the vision of one founder, one, one vision, one um, you know, homogenous view of the world that doesn't provide all of the diverse things that studies have shown having good diverse team members can bring to something. So it's, it, to me, it's, it's just a balance. And, um, and also you, you can't, you know, you will have to have delegation. You will have to have managers as you grow a company. Um, so what is the, what is the SOP for delegation? Because it could be very inconsistent if, it's one person just kind of shooting from the hip and doing it, you know, and, and I think it's very easy for a founder like that to either burn out or if you're thinking as the founder to sacrifice your personal relationships because you have to spend all of your time and then some in the company. So um, I, I believe there are goods and bads to it as there are with most things, but I would be an advocate for definitely do not over delegate and go 100% manager mode but also definitely don't hold on to the reins so tightly that you're in a 100% founder mode either because both have advantages and disadvantages. And I believe that a hybrid model could actually be the ideal that brings together the best of all those worlds. What are your thoughts? Very similar. When, when I think about the concept of founder mode versus manager mode, what, what struck me is this is not a problem to be solved. This is a tension that needs to be managed. And there are going to be seasons in the life of a business where what it really needs is that in the trenches pirate ship captain to lead it through whatever it's going through. And then there are times when really you need to be able to shift into a little bit more of a strategic management type type role. And, and this happens over the life cycle of a business in the early days of a company. It needs that inventor person. It needs that kind of wild, crazy, harebrained scheme and inventor who's going to come up with the breakthrough ideas that, that a business can be built upon. And then what it needs is that hard charging driver that's going to take this idea and really run with it. But then it kind of needs somebody to pause a little bit and to build some systems. And, you know, and then it kind of needs somebody to step away a little bit and, and kind of guide it, not necessarily from afar, but guide it with the help of other capable, competent professionals. And then there's almost certainly going to be seasons when things don't go very well and you're going to have to go back into one of those other modes. And so I think the ability to shift modes. And I don't think it's just founder and manager mode. I really do see it as being four very distinct roles. It's the inventor, it's the builder. I'm sorry, it's the inventor, it's the driver, it's the builder, and it's the guide. And I think great CEOs, great founder CEOs especially, know how to shift between context shift between those different modes. And they also know how to determine what their business needs the most right now. So again, I think it's a, it's a tension to be managed. And, and the best way to look at this is when you're trying to decide, okay, is this something, is this a direction I need to go? Take it out to its extreme. If you flip it and you invert it and the opposite of it is also bad, that probably means the extreme of what you're doing is really, really bad too. And, and so, I mean, I think it's very easy to say, oh, bureaucracy. Bureaucracies in, in, in startups and companies is a really bad thing. And everybody's nodding their head and saying, yeah, of course, okay. Then should we do the opposite? Well, what's the opposite? Well, the opposite's a pirate ship. And you know what? They're also bad too. You and I have been a part of many pirate ship organizations that totally imploded. So I just, I love, I wrote down a, uh, Niels Bohr, who's the physicist. He said, um, I love what he says. So the opposite of a fact is a falsehood, but the opposite of an absolute truth may very well be another absolute profound truth. And I think that's the case here. It's absolutely, you need to go into founder mode, mode from time to time. Absolutely, you need to go into manager mode from time to time. And the magic is in balancing that tension, not it's not just deciding that one is better than the other. 
And, yeah, and it's like funny that. to me. Sorry, go ahead. I, I liked that he said, um, but I want to hear what's funny to, to you first. So go ahead and finish that. Well, I, I also love when he said in there, um, this idea that if you, you know, hire good people and just let them do what they do. But the example he gave is like, yeah, this company did that, but they ran it into the ground. Well, I submit to you that maybe those weren't good people. Yeah. There's a lot right? of assumptions uh, in that. It's similarly, right. to say that he switched to founders mode and and then the companies had the highest profitability ever. Well, you know, <laughs> how do we know that there's a correlation between, you know, the the that, that one caused the other, you know, just, just that, that there's well, a lot and, of, uh, and down in the, in the footnote it's um, you know, he says in here, I have another less optimistic prediction. As soon as the concept of founder mode uh, becomes uh, established, people will start misusing it. Founders who are unable to delegate even things they should will use founder mode as the excuse yeah. ergo pirate ship. And that's where the pendulum swings. So I think seeing the value in both, and understanding yeah. as the founder CEO, what do I need? But also, yeah, at scale, you have to build a team of smart people around you, but they're your, your lieutenants. Don't hand the reins over to them completely. Well, what, what Chesky said was um, not doing this with everything. It was really being more focused on being plugged into the culture and vision, uh, the product and the marketing. And so... For a founder who has those skills, um, that would make sense. Um, but there's so many other areas of the business, finance, customer service, direct operations, recruiting, human resources, all of that kind of stuff that don't fall into the things that he's talking about. So those would all be areas that you would presume could be delegated relatively harmlessly without affecting the things that cause him to say, let's stay in founder's mode. So that's like right off the bat, you, you can carve out giant parts of the organization that you, you can delegate to and stay plugged in on. And um, I thought that was, that was important. <laughs>